Next question is from 12 Weeks Out. When should you train through pain versus taking time off? It seems like doctors want to sideline you if you have any pain at all. You know, the more you work out, the more you start to kind of learn your body, the easier it is for you to decipher good pain from bad pain. Why is it important to know the difference between good pain and bad pain? Because then I can move within my limits. I know what my edges are, right? So if my knee is sore or my hip is sore, it's slightly injured, I can work on mobility and I can go to the edge and know that if I go beyond this particular range of motion, I'm going to injure myself further. But I can move up to that edge and work on strengthening it, bringing blood to the area, mm -hmm. which oftentimes will accelerate recovery. So this is when it becomes uh, very important to understand the difference. Now, for someone listening who's like, oh gosh, that sounds so so hard to, to decipher, you know, start with this. Sore muscles, typically moving them with low intensity is a great thing. Joints oftentimes need rest. Not always can you move through joint pain and make them feel better. Oftentimes, if a joint hurts, if it's in the joint, Oftentimes, rest is something that that particular uh, you know situation. Well, needs. I always think that so pain worries me, right? Someone says I'm in pain or something. I have pain somewhere versus I'm sore. Sore and pain are different. Like somebody can be very sore. Well, they both and, hurt. I know, but yeah. and that and a lot of people interpret soreness as pain when right. it's just muscle soreness, which is not as big of a deal. And training through it a lot of times is actually a great thing for you to do. But if someone if a client complains to me that they have pain. And like the pain is not going away. Like like uh, soreness should progressively get better over time, right? So as days go by, yeah. you're le a little less sore, a little less sore just because you're resting and recovering. A lot of times if you've injured something like and you have serious pain somewhere, two days, three days, five days doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm like telling a client, okay, you should probably go see a doctor. We might need an MRI. We might need an x-ray because you may have tore something. You may have broke something. You may have fractured something. And that is to me pain. But being sore... And it being, you know, painful because you're sore, that's a different story because you might have just overtrained a little bit. And then there's tremendous value in you doing mobility work mm -hmm. and working through it and getting some circulation, getting rehydrated, things like that. That's but you have to be able to decipher the two. Yeah. Well, kind of this is kind of a rule of thumb. Does light movement make the pain feel better? All right. Usually or worse. you yeah, or worse, right? Usually, if it makes it feel better, then movement's what you want to do. If you do light movement and then it feels worse, then you probably should set yeah. it you know, aside and let it rest. I still think it's better, you know, to at least go through that and find where those edges are, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, just so you know, because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to function and walk and move and do things and lift, uh, you know, bags of groceries. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to go on with with the rest of uh, how you would normally do things. And so to, uh, to to start that process in a very gradual way, I think, has value in itself. But it, it is scary to when you're getting these parameters and the doctor's telling you, like, no, I don't want you to move at all. Uh, but there's there's definitely degrees of of you know what what your body's gonna gonna tell you like in terms of a signal of pain like this is this is where you know that range is for you. Well, no, that's a good point because even a, a I mean a physical therapist after you've tore something or broke something they they take you through that. I mean that's part of the process of re, re, mm -hmm. rehab is yeah they they put you to those those end limits. I mean a lot of times rehab is is painful and is tough because they are oh, yeah. pushing those in those end ranges and stretching yeah. your capacity. So. Uh, that just a little risk. If you got, if you have a major injury and you're in major pain, doing that by yourself without the expertise or guidance. Yeah, that to me that's something yeah. that's like. I by, would, by the way, this is one of the main values of of exercising regularly. Is it puts you in your body. I used to it used to blow me away when I was a new trainer, and I would train a client that really never exercised on a regular basis, just how outside of their body they yeah. were. Like they would do an exercise. I used to get this all the time. They're doing an exercise that's targeting a specific area and they'd be like, where am I supposed to feel this? You know, what do you mean? Where are you supposed to feel this? Yeah. You know, and they're fatiguing too and they just feel it everywhere or they're sore and they'd be like, I think I hurt myself. It's like, well, no, that's actually what muscle soreness feels like. Or they couldn't tolerate the fatigue or pain from regular appropriate exercise. So when you exercise on a regular basis, you actually learn to be in your body. You learn yeah. to decipher. You get in tune with it. Exactly. Because yeah. if you never do that stuff, you're literally detached from your body. And I've seen this time and time again with new clients, and it was always strange to me. But then you'd see them improve their connection as they continue to be consistent.